human race has always thought of technologies, which can effectively defend them and enable them to destroy their enemies. One such revolutionary technology, which was made possible, because of the advancements in engineering and sciences, is the hypersonic missile technology. All the world's superpowers are investing in the development of sustainable hypersonic missile systems and scramjets, because of the potential it holds. In this video, we will understand how the scramjet engine works, the challenges in realizing scramjet technology and how they are overcome. To understand what is hypersonics, we need to understand, what is Mach number. Sound travels at different speeds in different mediums. If the velocity of missile is less than the speed of sound in air, then we call it subsonic speeds, or Mach less than 1. If missile speed equals the speed of sound, then Mach number equals 1, or sonic speed. Above Mach 1, the missile speed is supersonic. But it does not stop there, if we still increase the missile speed, more than four times the speed of sound, that is Mach greater than four, we call it hypersonic speeds. The scramjet engines are the sophisticated engines, which are used to propel the missiles to hypersonic speeds, to the target. But it is extremely difficult to realize this technology and many challenges are to be overcome. The scramjet engines, which are being developed by many countries, flies at speeds more than Mach 6. At these high speeds, the drag caused by the air, or the aerodynamic drag will be very high, at lower altitudes. To overcome this, the scramjet engines are operated at altitudes more than 30 kilometers. Solid rocket boosters are used to take the scramjet to the required altitude and to the hypersonic speeds. After that, the booster separates and fall off. Then the scramjet engine starts combustion and propel itself at the hypersonic speeds. Because of these high speeds, it is very hard to intercept these hypersonic missiles. It gives very less reaction time to the targets and makes the attack brutal and successful. When an object flies at supersonic and hypersonic speeds, shocks will be formed. An oblique shock is one type of shock, which are predominantly formed and used in scramjet operation. When air passes through an oblique shock, its speed or Mach number reduces, the pressure and temperature of the air increases after the shock. The scramjet works by taking air at hypersonic speeds into the intake. Because of the intake and the intake ramp's design, oblique shocks will be formed from the nose and due to reflections from the ramp surface, series of shocks, which are called as shock train are formed. When the air passes through these shock trains, the velocity or Mach number of the air reduces, while the temperature and pressure of the air increases. So, when the air enters the combustion zone, the speed of air will be reduced to supersonic speeds in the range of Mach 2. This is the reason for the name, supersonic combustion ramjet, since the combustion takes place at supersonic air speeds. In scramjet engine, establishing and sustaining combustion is the most critical issue. Though the speed of air has been reduced to supersonic speeds, it is still very fast, and it gives very small time for the fuel and air to mix and perform combustion. The flame stability is the main area of research in scramjet engines. After combustion, the flow, which is supersonic, goes out of the combustion zone and reach the nozzle. The nozzle is formed as a part of the scramjet body itself. As, nozzles have to accelerate the flow to produce thrust, diverging type cross-section is used here for the nozzles. Since, unlike regular subsonic flows, supersonic flows behave differently. Supersonic flows accelerate in diverging sections and slow down in converging sections, which is opposite of the regular subsonic flows which we experience in daily life. The other great challenge, dealing with hypersonic flows is the high temperature associated with it. We all know, when a fluid flows over a body, its velocity near the wall of the body will be zero, also called, no-slip boundary. So, the external free stream flow has to decelerate and become zero at the walls. This region we call it the velocity boundary layer. Since in hypersonic flow, the free stream flow is at very high velocity, when it slows down to become zero at the walls, the kinetic energy of the flow will be converted to internal energy, and the temperature of the air near the walls will increase to very high values. 
At some points in the missile trajectory, it may reach several thousand degrees, which will melt any metal. To prevent it, several layers of exotic materials like titanium and nickel-based alloys, with high temperature coatings will be used, based on the heat transfer at the particular region of the missile body. Since we require sophisticated CFD analysis for prediction of heat transfer, hypersonic wind tunnel facilities to study the shock trains and aerodynamics of the missile, and highly sophisticated fuel and combustion testing facilities for the realization of the scramjet technology, only few countries in the world are having preliminary level, working scramjet engines, which can fly at speeds greater than Mach 6.